Hey everyone, it's Kevin. So I just created a new piece for the 4th of July and it was something that was pretty last minute but I wanted to do something for the holiday and also do more tests with grease pencil and geometry nodes so I thought this was the perfect opportunity. Now if you don't know what grease pencil is, it's an object within Blender that allows you to draw in 3D space. And geometry nodes, it's a fairly new feature in Blender that's completely node based but it allows you to create these complex objects particles, uh, procedurally generated graphics, and way, way more. So I'm still learning a lot about Blender, but I'm hearing about updates constantly, and I'm trying to keep up because I think it's just all really cool and exciting. So for this piece, I didn't really have a big plan. I just knew I wanted to create some sort of firework with these two features. Usually I would draw the concept out, but because I started this yesterday, and I kind of had an idea of how I wanted it to look, I just went for it. The idea being just some typography and explosions everywhere. <laughs> but I would split it up into two phases. So the first one would be this charging phase where you'd have these particles kind of going around in a circle and then you would go and have an explosion phase where you would get a flurry of fireworks. So to set this up, I placed down an object which is that fourth in the center. I just needed something that I could use as reference for myself and for the other objects. And uh, this was just a text object that I converted into a mesh. Then I created a camera to plan out the scene better. The camera is attached to an empty that has an object constraint to follow that circular curve. Uh, so then I animated the curve to rotate and scale in and out to affect the camera view. So the first elements I created were these swirling particles, uh, and the important thing here is that most of the elements I created were just particle systems. Uh, but how this works is that in geometry nodes, you can have a mesh, let's say a UV sphere, and on every single point of the sphere, you can actually make that another object. So it becomes a particle system. You can bring in other meshes, grease pencil objects, other meshes with geometry node systems, and probably a lot more. Then you can also bring in other nodes that affect each of those points or the system itself. And as I was doing this, I was starting to think of other ideas I could try. If you're looking to get started with this, I actually referenced two channels that were really helpful early on, and those are Sketches for Humanity and CG Cookie. So thank you so much. <laughs> I also have a tutorial that I released earlier this week that uses geometry nodes and grease pencil as well to create a happy star. So you can check out those links below. So for the swirls, I referenced a tutorial by Sketches for Humanity that was really helpful. And again, I'll put a link in the description. So I wanted to have some sort of particle trail that started from the bottom and then to the top and then culminated into this big explosion. So using geometry nodes, I was able to instance glowing spheres onto these swirls and then I used an empty to follow the trail and reveal them. I first brought in a swirl curve and then duplicated it. On the duplicate, I added some geometry, converted it into a mesh, selected its points, and then put them in a vertex group that I would reference later on. Then I added a new geometry node setup onto the mesh and this is where I was able to instance those glowing spheres. I brought in an empty and had it follow the swirl curve with an object constraint. On the swirl mesh, I added a vertex weight proximity modifier. I believe how this works is that the modifier is able to calculate the distance between an object you specify, in this case our empty, and the points of a target mesh. So its influence on those points is determined by how close it is. So after applying this, I went back to the geometry node setup and I brought in an attribute next node to bring in that empty and have it affect the scale of the particles. And when that empty moves along the curve, they appear like this, which is really awesome. Uh, you can do amazing things with this technique. For the type, I kind of kept it simple. I just did some grease pencil lettering and I added a build modifier on it. Um, I also knew that I wanted to keep the fourth pretty prominent, so I kept the mesh and just added a, a simple emission shader on it. Uh, ultimately, I was fine with this, but I actually envisioned doing some textured gradient. Um, I did have a tune shader on it at one point and it was a grease pencil mesh, but given the time, I, I thought the result was fine enough. The fireworks were set up very similarly to the swirls except much simpler. So instead of the curves, I used a UV sphere and instanced these spark grease pencil objects on it. And then with making some node adjustments, I was able to get them to look like fireworks. Uh, the cool thing about this is that if you instance a grease pencil object with animation, it keeps the animation in addition to whatever you're animating in the geometry nodes. So to get those other colors, I just duplicated those geometry node systems and grease pencil objects and created new ones. So the star trail going down used the same techniques as the swirl I mentioned earlier, except the instance object is a sphere with another geometry node setup. Here I have three different colors in that system, red, blue, and white, and I also did some subtle animations on the rotation and differentiated the scale of them. 
The star wall is similar to the other setups except this is a plane, and it's subdivided so that we have some points to work with. Uh, the grease pencil star objects are the ones that are instants. The difference between this and the other two is that I used a UV map and texture in order to affect the scale of the stars, and animating the UV map resulted in this kind of rippling effect. And that's it for this piece. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun to try and experiment and I'm really looking forward to the next few pieces I'm going to create uh, using geometry nodes. If you use geometry nodes yourself, uh, let me know what you think of them in the comments. And if you have any other questions or suggestions, feel free to let me know as well. Thanks again and see you guys next time.